This is a series of MoneyWeb video blogs with controversial columnist David Bullard. So David, you're fired from the Sunday Times. Why should we care what you have to say? Precisely because of that. Be precisely because on uh, April the 10th of uh, 2008, the Sunday Times announced to the world that uh, he didn't think its readers were smart enough to actually understand what I'd been writing about for the previous 14 years. And rather than risk any misunderstanding, they would get rid of somebody who was actually throwing a bit of well-needed controversy into the argument every week. Happily rescued by MoneyWeb, but, uh, you know, shunned by the other papers as well. I mean, the uh, Star picked up one column the, d the week I was sacked. Other newspapers made offers and then rescinded those offers simply because David Bullard is too bloody dangerous to actually have on the page, they thought. So do you think that South Africa is just not mature enough to handle a racial debate or to handle any sort of debate? Well, I think, as we've seen lately, you know, I, I've joined, um, uh, well, I say another, a lot of people have joined my group. I mean, uh, the group of now known racists has expanded. There's Bobby Godsell, there's Jonathan Jansen, there's myself, there's Dennis Davis, there's Helen Ziller, there's Tony Leon. I mean, it's... Uh, it's getting quite a sort of a, a large group. It's just, you know, I, I think that in answer to that question, you need somebody who's going to stir the pot. I, I grew up in the UK, and my background, cultural background, is magazines like Private Eye, reviews like Beyond the Fringe. And I remember Peter Cook, who was part of Beyond the Fringe, saying what he really enjoyed was getting up people's noses. It sort of stuck with me. I actually also enjoy getting up people's noses. I love that hate mail that comes through every week on the column. So the do you not think that uh, the people don't necessarily want to think, they just want to go about their happy lives, ignoring what's going on? There's an element of people like that. There are others who want to think, there are others who want to be offended uh, every morning. They want to get up and be offended by something, and that's, I don't understand them, but, you know, there are people who would like to get out of bed and be deeply offended, and I'm the sort of person who can do that for them, you know. If you want to be offended, read David Bullard's column on MoneyWeb, because it's damn sure it's going to offend somebody. As we saw last week, I think it offended about 50 people. I try like to get those sums down up a little bit, you know. They've been around the seven or eight mark. Last week was great, it was 50, and I'd quite like to get about 200 people really loathing me every week, because you know damn well that they're going to be back the week after. Oh, you're not just feeding the racial rift in South Africa. Though. It seems like we just have this, this chasm that we can't cross. Yeah, I think that's a serious question, isn't it? And I think what we should say on that is that I wrote a couple of weeks ago that I think that we're going to find that the accusation of racism reflects worse on those making it than those on the receiving end. It's inevitable that we were going to have it, and I think it was simmering away on the back burner under Tabo and Becky's rather unsuccessful presidency, where we, as a country, didn't go anywhere for eight years. I mean, those really were the wasted years. It's now come out, and it uh, comes out regularly with Black Management Forum, and it comes out with the, obviously, with the ANC Youth League. But I am encouraged that an enormous amount of people that I interact with when I give speeches, which I do fairly frequently, uh, young, intelligent, black South Africans, um, really are heartily sick of the whole thing. They want the country to move forward. They've looked at a global recession, they've looked at China, they've looked at countries that do well, and they've looked at us, and we're not doing well. This is where they live. I mean, I can push off. I've got one of those passports that mean I can live in, in Europe. I don't want to. I would rather live here, but I'd rather live somewhere successful. You know, being good at cricket, being good at rugby is all very well, but it'd be quite nice to be good at, um, at football, that would be helpful for next year, and it'd be quite nice to be good at many other things as well. And, and really, we have, the, we have the talent. I mean, I would agree to a certain extent with Jimmy Manu that there isn't a shortage of talent, but there's a, a shortage of ways of advancing the right people. It seems to be that the wrong people get into the jobs and the talented people don't get into them. Those are complaints that also come from black South Africans. So looking at the prestigious group that you share, the racist group with, uh, as you said, Tony Leon and Helen Ziller. I mean, those, you know, those sort of people are clearly people that can think. So it doesn't seem like the, the era of racism is really aimed properly. What is it, what is it hiding? What it's, is a very, uh, Chris, it's a very damaging thing. I mean, when you're sacked from a newspaper the size of the Sunday Times and posters appear around town saying, Bullard's sacked for racist article, that essentially says Bullard is racist. And uh, I won't deny that in the first two or three months it was devastating. I mean, all business uh, went. I had somebody phone me and said, you know, uh, Dave, you know, we can't have you as MC for this event next week because the audience of some of them have phoned and said we don't want a racist as MC. I said, well, have you tried it? Give it a go. You know, what the hell? But um, it wasn't an appropriate time to make that joke. So there was a lot of business lost. I actually also hold, I don't know if you know, a world record for being the editor of a magazine that I never knew I edited for only one month. Let me tell you about this. 
I was made editor of a magazine called Danefern, which goes to all those lucky people who live in that strange um, golfing estate overlooking the um, sewage pipe. And um, the magazine came out, and a woman called Irene Charnley, who I believe is now reorganizing the SABC, saw it and went to the manager of Dane Fern and said, we can't have a racist editing the magazine, sack him. So I actually got sacked without me even knowing I was editing the magazine, um, because I heard on the grapevine that I'd not only been sacked from the Sunday Times, but I've now sacked from this magazine. And I only found out, um, you know, a week or two later, that I'd actually been sacked from a magazine that I didn't know I edited. So that, I think, is a first for publishing. It is an illustration also of how stupid the whole thing was because there was this mad sort of scramble and, and name calling. And I decided the best policy was to get out and about, talk to as many people as possible, lecture at Pretoria University, where I was lucky enough to be invited to do so, and, and, and really tell my side of the story. And interestingly, none of my accusers ever, ever came on live radio or live TV. And as we know, because it's well recorded, none of them have ever accepted the invitation to debate at Constitution Hill or on Metro FM. They've gone a bit quiet now because I think if you do that and say, right, guys, you think I'm this, come into your territory and let's debate this, and they don't do it, well, then there's no credibility. So I'm very cool with the whole racist thing, frankly, because I've actually turned it into a sort of a, a brand advantage. People actually hire me to go and give after-dinner speeches because they know it's going to piss a whole lot of people off, but at least they'll go home having had an interesting evening. To be offended regularly, check MoneyWeb for David Bullard's Out to Lunch